morning. Um, here this morning to make another little Christmas card with you. This was a card that um, we made on my Numb for the Holidays class on Saturday and it illustrates the masking technique to get all these little guys standing up together without stamping on top of one another. Um, so I am going to show you how to make this card this morning and I'm going to try a different colour um, just to see how it looks. So I'm going to point you down and we'll get started. So again, this is the card that we made. Oh, excuse my ribbons from that. Um, it's one of my favourite sets from this year's um, Christmas catalogue. So it's known for the holidays. And as I said, I did a class on this on Saturday. And I'm going to put up the tutorial for sale on my blog later. But I'll just show you how to make this one anyway. Hi, Kirsty. Oh, here you go. You'll get <laughs> you'll get to see this one in action. Um, so we've got the little stamp here, which is this little guy, which is one of the cutest, I think. Isn't he fun? And I'm going to make him in blues this time. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is to stamp your gnome on a sticky note or a post-it of some sort. So I have my gnome here. I'm going to be using Stampin' Blends to um, colour him. So that means I'm going to use Memento ink to stamp him in because Memento is a water-based ink and then the blends are alcohol markers and that way the colours won't bleed. If I were going to watercolour, um, you wouldn't want to use a water-based ink. You'd want to use an alcohol-based ink like stays on. And as these are red rubber, that wouldn't matter. So I'm going to stamp down my gnome on the post-it. It doesn't matter too much about the quality of the stamping. It's not as easy to stamp on uh, a post-it as our Whisper White card. But as it's only used for a mask, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to stamp, oh sorry, stamp, no, we're going to cut them out, fussy cut them as close to the lines as possible um, because obviously he's been used as a mask and we want to, wherever your sticky note stickiness is, if you like, you want to be, make sure that he's as close to that as possible because you want him sticking down. I'll tidy that bit at the top in a minute, but we are just going to stamp around him. I stamp, I keep saying stamp, we're not stamping, we're cutting. We have stamped him. Okay, and then I'll just tidy up this bit. Oops, so I'm sorry, you are going to have to sit and watch me cut, which is probably like watching paint dry. I have um, stamped them twice more because we at one point we will need three little gnomes covered. We start off just coloring, so sorry, covering one, um, but we will end up at the very, for the very final top of the tree gnome, we will need to cover three of the previously stamped ones. We think this card, what I told the ladies on Saturday, was, he look, they just look like they need a little motorbike <laughs> for one of those kind of um, display team, police display team kind of things. If we had a little, but any kind of bike or motorbike stamp that I have is sideways on, not front facing, so I can't stick them on a motorbike. But that could be an idea if you have such a stamp in your arsenal. But I do love him in red and green and I haven't <laughs> practiced this one either. So I haven't seen what he looks like or what they look like in blue. I have made a blue card but, um, and we did that in the class, but I haven't made this particular design in shades of blue. So my original card, the gingham paper in the background is from our heartwarming hugs um, collection. 
It's lovely paper, actually. There's a couple of um, gingham designs. I've just got another bit sitting here. So this, like that. So they're all in Mossy Meadow, um, Pear Pizzazz, and Real Red. So it's pretty nice. But this one, as I say, we're going to do in blues. So as you can see, when I'm cutting, I hope I keep forgetting to make sure you can see but when I'm cutting my scissors stay straight or stay still if you like and it's my left hand is moving the image and that way you don't get so much of the um, choppy scissor cuts and you can um, get a smoother cut especially if you're going out around something round okay so I've got I shall move this out of the way because no doubt I will get my card in the ink. It is a habit of mine. So I've got three little guys. I'll place them there so I don't lose them. Then I have a card base in Bami Blue already cut out somewhere. Where have I put my card? Oh, here it is. Right. So my card base is in Bami Blue, so just like this one which I'd done in Real Red. And I'm going to um, put a piece of uh, Whisper White. So it's half a centimetre smaller both sides than your card base, or if you work in inches, that is um, an eighth of an inch smaller on each side. I've cut out a rectangle with the stitched shapes framelits and I believe it is the third yeah the third largest and then I have cut with this little triangle um a little another little tri uh, triangle with this little rectangle I've got another one for the sentiment then I'm going to use this time this is our feels like frost paper which carried over from last year so it's on page 42 and they're all uh, silver images on one side and then different hues of blues and purples on the other. Here's another couple of little bits um, of like sort of photographic images. And I say they're silver on one side, but I have very little of this left. So I was going to use this one. So I'm just going to cut a small section of that with my trusty trimmer. I'll probably do it about five centimeters or two inches wide, and then the same width. No, what am I doing? The same width as my white, uh, my white mat behind. So I'm just going to adhere that like so, kind of in the middle. And I might put a little piece of this ribbon around it. This is our, oh, what is it called? It was in the Halloween section, but I think it's great for Christmas. Um, let me just find out. It's at the back with the Halloween. I think it's just called metallic. What is it called now? Sorry about that. Metallic mesh ribbon. Um, I'm going to wrap that around and on my original here I did a little bow but this one I'm just going to tie a knot. So I'll wrap, I'll attach the um, DSP first. I could have used the, hmm, no. No, I'll keep with the pink and the, oh what am I doing? Oh well, well I am doing the <laughs> silver side now. I've done the wrong one in which case I might swap the ribbon. I put the glue in the wrong bit. Yeah. Right, I'll use a different ribbon now. I won't use my metallic mesh because that will cover that over. This boy, so I might use this one instead. Yeah, trust me to put the glue in the wrong side. So this is, I think this one will be easy enough to tie a bow on. I think I might move you up. You seem a bit too close to my um, surface. So I'll tie a bow in one side. OK, 
can adjust that in a minute. And I've got a bit of post-it stuck to my finger. Get off. I'll adjust the tails once I get my um, bow the way I want it. Good morning, Nick. How are we? I believe Gemma is, or maybe she might have gone. Gemma was there a minute ago. Right. So something along those lines. And I'll just make it a bit shorter. On both sides. And then I can go ahead and stick this down onto my card base. And the card base is, if I didn't tell you already, is Bami Blue. And I might just, to secure that a bit more, I'll put a little glue dot under that in a minute. But anyway, back to the interesting part of stamping our array of gnomes. So first of all what we're going to do is bring back in my ink, put my other one out of the way and then I'm going to stamp the first gnome centrally at the bottom and you want to put them down far enough because obviously we're doing three levels of gnomes so pretty close to the bottom here. Okay then we're going to take one of our post-its and we're going to place the post-it over our little gnome. And then we are going to stamp a gnome either side of him. Now obviously you're going to stamp over your post-it, but that doesn't matter. Let me just move this. Oops. I'll move it up closer just to make sure you can get a good view. Because it seems as if it's a bit shadowy. I'll just move my light a little bit over. If that, if that helps. Okay, so we're going to stamp one here and then one on the other side. Oh, didn't stamp him particularly well. We can always fill that in with a little bit of marker. Okay, so now we've stamped the three in a row. We're going to take back in another a post it we're going to cover the gnome on the left and I'll ink up my stamp a bit better this time check it's got the ink and I'm going to stamp a gnome in between the two like there then I'm going to remove this post it and put it on the other side to cover this little gnome Hi Rico, how are you? It's so good to see that you're watching. So I'm going to stamp this one in between the two here. And then this is where you need the three. So I'm going to remove this one and cover second level gnome and then take our third post-it and cover the other second level gnome and I'll stamp one in between the two at the very top. So he's on the top of the tree. And then, oop, left his bell on. When you remove all the post-its, all the, all the gnomes are in formation and they're not um, stamped on top of each other. So or their feet, their hands aren't on top of their hands, if you know what I mean. So then I'm going to colour them in and I'm going to use blends. So first of all, let me find my ivory for the skin tone. I always get the petal pink and the ivory mixed up in my box. Excuse the noise. All the colours that I want to use, but I've left ivory behind. 
No, it's broken. Aww. Oh, here's this is. No, not the pink. Oh, there it is. I had it. I had it out. I thought that that was the ivory. So first of all, um, I'll colour in all their noses and faces. I always think when I put this on, I was saying to the ladies, it does sort of dry a lighter colour, but when you first put it on, it looks like um, the gnomes have been in a sunbed. But it does calm down a little bit. Okay, so there's all their nose. Oh, missed a hand. There's their nose done. And then I shall give them a little grey beard. Actually, I might just take a black marker and um, I'll, I'll let it sit up the right way around for a bit. I might fill those lines in at the bottom. So I usually use the nib end if I'm doing some sort of delicate colouring. And then if it's a larger area, like here for his beard, I'll go with the brush end. And then so all his beard can be grey, which is our, I'm using our smoky slate. And then I did alternate colours in my original, but I think I'll just keep keep them all blue on this one. Um, so I'm going to do the balmy blue, which is the colour of our card base. So I'll go kind of quickly and I'll just do maybe three at a time. And then I'll go back and just do a little shading, not very much. I'll go back with the dark, almost as if the light is shining on them from the front so that the middle of their hat is the kind of lighter section. And then I go back, must remember to keep your um, the nibs on tight because being alcohol markers, they do dry out. Um, if you don't have the nib on tight. So back with the balmy blue, the light balmy blue. And then a little shading around the edge. I'm not the best colour -er in er. <laughs> so I'm sure when you do these yourselves, if you're using the blends, you will probably get a much better effect. But I do love using them. And then I might take my the white, which is the colour mixture. And just put a little lighter section in the middle as if that's where the light is coming from. Then I'm going to take my darker smoky slate for their little boots. I did use black I think on one of my cards at the weekend and yeah the, the grey is much better. And what else am I missing? I think we will do just some silver bells. See how the, the little um, faces, they have calmed down a bit. They're not quite as sunbed looking as they were before. And then I'm going to take the darker balmy blue just for their clothes. And 
and then he has nope that's it really I think I might see if I can add a few lines down here I may need a new marker actually be up here yeah I think it's time to replace my black marker okay I'm missing a bit of his beard so. add a little bit of beard in there I think Okay, now, the final bit, everyone in my class at the weekend got a Wink of Stella pen and you need one of these for your Christmas cards. It just makes everything, it just turns a normal card from a normal card to a Christmas card with a, just a little bit of sparkle and just the right amount of sparkle. It's quite delicate, but it's gorgeous. So I'm just going to give their bells and their hats. I think someone on Saturday made their <laughs> beard sparkly too. And why not? But I'm just going to do the bells and the hats. I don't know if you can see. I can maybe move my light to kind of see. Can you see the sparkle on that from the Wink of Stella? It is quite delicate. But... It's lovely. You can use this as a blending tool as well. Um, there. Okay. So the final thing to do is to take the little, the little, the little um, stitched rectangle and have our greeting, which I'm going to use the a little Christmas wish. So let me just get this block that fits that one. If you don't have the full range of blocks, um, you can always just use the closest in size that you have to whichever stamp you're using. Try not to use a really large block um, for a really tiny stamp as you don't have the same sort of control when you're stamping. So here we go, we have a little Christmas wish. I'll try to lean over and not get my head in the camera. Try and get it central. It's a little bit too high, but I couldn't quite get my head over. Okay, so, so, so far we have our card base with our little bit of Feels Like Frost DSP. We will make sure that that's over to the side. I need to move my bow over a little bit. So just as well, I haven't put the glue dot down yet. I'm gonna put the bow right on the edge. Because there wasn't quite enough room for my image. Ooh, I'm all fingers and thumbs. Oh, it's quite cold in here this morning. Well, it's always quite cold in here, but it's particularly cold this morning. So my fingers are a little bit, no thanks, I don't want to be doing little bows. Okay. Move that up. And then I'm going to put these on dimensionals. I do like raising things for a bit of effect. Now, as you can see, when you use the blends, they do um, bleed through. So you, can, you can't use them on a single layer card because when you open your card, you'd see the bleeding through on the other side. So you can, you only really use blends if you are putting a layer on top of a card base. So, oh, and I need some for these. In fact, I have used the wrong side of that. So, let's... Ah. 
you know what I'm gonna do that one again hold on a little second and I'm gonna just cut out another little rectangle from the scrap and use that again because I'm gonna ask you like I did last week which your favorite ones are so I don't want to have a dodgy card with greeting on the wrong side of the rectangle because the stitching is a little bit different on the other side. So I'm just using my die cutter to cut another little uh, rectangle and this time I will stamp on the right side of it or the correct side of it and I will try. I might just move this down a little bit so I can get it, um, get my head more on top if you don't mind and hopefully get that more central. That's better. A little bit better than that silly one, which was a bit too high. So I'll put some dimensionals on the back of this as well. I'll put three on just to make sure it doesn't dip in the middle. And then taking all the backings off, which is another paint drying experience. I did watch a video where someone kind of poked everyone with their um, piercing tool and that did make all the backings come off pretty easy. I could put them all off, yep. But I only ever remember that when I've sat down to do it. Oh, I've stuck it up to the most surface. Right, there we go, okay. So I'm going to get that up to the top, to about there, so that I've got room for my greeting at the bottom. There you go. So that is more of a an alternative festive colour um, using blues and silvers because um, not everyone is team red and green for Christmas. Some people like the more iced colours. Um, I'm just going to take my other scissors to give that a nicer tails or shorter tails as well. Oops. There. Okay. So we've got the two. So we have our silver and blue and our red and green. Now, if you if you want to see the other cards that we created on um, our Gnome for the Holidays class, they will be over on my blog. Um, I'm just about to make it go live. <laughs> so it won't be there if you click right this second, but it'll be there in about 15 minutes. Um, and those, the tutorial will be for sale. Um, you can see it on my top sidebar. There's a section saying tutorials for sale. So that will be for sale later today. And I also have a great, um, post this morning that went live on our Let's Get Hopping blog hop, which is the theme this month is all about gifts. And there's some fabulous ideas if you hop around. Um, but I'd love to know which one of these you like more. Do you Are you team red and green? Um, if you can see the sparkle. I can't really, I can't see it, but maybe it's because my screen's a bit dark. Maybe when I watch this back, you can see the sparkle. So they're red and green with gold bells, or we're team blue and silver. I'd love to know which one is your favourite. Um, but thanks for joining me this morning. And lovely to see you, Rico, all the way from Japan. I wonder what time it is. It's half 11 with us. I wonder what time it is with you. It must be about five, six, at least maybe six hours ahead. Um, but I hope it's, hope everything is going well over there and um, you're staying safe. Okay, I'll see you again next week for another little live crafting session. All right, have a great week, everybody. And um, see you soon. Bye.